uh, I'm going to flip the camera around and show you um, what we're going to do here with uh, four different colors of green I'm going to use. So I have four greens that I'm going to be working with here. Um, I'm going to hold them up so you can see. These are all Daniel Smith colors. I've got a Cascade Green, Green Gold, Serpentine Genuine, and Rare Green Earth. Okay, all of these are just dynamically different from one another and do different things and that's what we're going to take a look at today all right, all right so, so let's start with the cascade green um this this green uh all of these are going to have very certain kind of behaviors uh, meaning that they granulate in a specific way and may even exhibit a uh, an unexpected uh color variation square uh on the side where i've written i'm going to apply some water about halfway up because I want to I want to see what this pigment is going to do uh, when it interacts with wet paper okay so got my brush loaded up I'll start over here on the dry end just so that I can see really full strength the power the intensity of this color and what it's going to do and I'm basically just going to make a little wash coming all the way down and of course when this watercolor touches the wet that I've got it's going to start to take off and this is the point where I can start to see what this color is going to do when it comes into contact with wet paper okay. I'm not gonna get in here and fiddle with this I'm gonna let that just sort of uh, do its thing uh, if I do have a little bit of buildup of water I'll mop it up just so it doesn't escape and get into one of my other little squares there. I'm just gonna mop this up. And you notice I did not do any blending. I just let gravity sort of push and uh, sort of pull that pigment down. That's my, you know, my darkest area here, but you can start to see all of the granulation. See all of those little pits in the paper that have filled up with little dark mineral content? And then as you as you move across the gradient, you see this uh, almost like this turquoise blue that just sort of starts emanating. It just kind of takes off on its own, leaving all the green here. But then this blue, uh, this surprise blue, sort of just keeps coming out. So let's do the green gold next. If you're if you've ever had a workshop with me, you know that I use green gold uh, quite a bit. It works uh, really well for like backlit leaves and different things like that. It's the same technique. I'm just wetting this paper, just some clear water, I like halfway brush. So I'm going to start up here and you can see the intensity of this green. It is really, really, really bright. Uh, almost like a permanent green light, you know, if you're somewhat familiar with, uh, with colors and what they look like. It kind of reminds me of that, that really intense spring green color so when this comes in and starts making contact with the water I can immediately see movement starting to happen I'm gonna put just a little bit more in here I want this to be all right and then I'm gonna tilt the paper so that that color can begin to migrate down into the water and this again this is gonna let me see what this what this pigment is capable of what it likes to do what its tendencies are because I really need to know that when I'm painting you don't get these behaviors if you're just making a solid color you know a solid square of color it just it doesn't behave the same way look you can start to see why this color is called green gold so very green over here there is granulation in this color you can see the little pits in the paper again are being filled up with little mineral content and then you see this dynamic yellow that just continues to emerge out of this color okay okay again with the clear water i'm gonna get that nice and wet it really does have a uh, a really nice earthy tone to it and even even though these greens are very unique I still um, don't use them always just right out of the tube I will still kind of integrate other 
colors into it to make them unique and make them my own. But this is just straight out of the tube, just so that you can see what the colors are going to do and how they're going to behave. All right, again, I'm going to tilt this. All right, so let's take a look at this one. It might be hard to see in this sample, but there are lots of little flecks of red in this pigment. Um, Go. You want to make sure it's really nice and wet. You don't want to, if you, if it's too, if it's not wet enough, then what will happen uh, when your, when your color, when you start painting in here and you get your color close to the water, uh, if it's wet enough, your pigment should just fly away into that, into that water, just like that. See how the water just grabs it and just takes off with it. That's how you know you've got enough water on the paper. Okay, all right, again, let me tilt my board to encourage that to move. All right, so let's take a look at the this rare green earth. So there's not a lot of color emerging from this, but look at how thin and transparent it can become. The pigments are very heavy, so the, or the little minerals that are in here are very heavy, so they stay put, and then the water that's left just can sort of run away. But you can see, if this was a landscape, do you see how that misty row of trees could be back in the background, you know, off in the distance uh, that just sort of blends into the sky and gives you that nice, easy transition there? All right, so thanks so much for tuning in to that. If you like the tips that you just saw, that just kind of gives you a little sample of some of the things that I talk about in the group. That was actually one of our video sessions in the group. So. Uh, the link is in the description for the video. If you're a woman painter and you're interested in growth and having some community and access to free content uh, each week that helps you in your, your journey as a painter, I definitely invite you to come over, uh, check us out, and see if it's something that you would like to be involved in. We would love to have you. Thanks so much.